All right, fig lovers, this is Frost the Fig Boss. In today's video, we are reviewing a new variety to me. It's called Squeglia. And this is a fig that uh, comes from Mario in Connecticut from his collection. It's uh, number nine in his collection. And Mario, for those of you guys who don't know, when he was still alive, he would go to Italy quite frequently for wine and visit many wineries there. Um, and in his travels, he would bring back cuttings that he finds. And a lot of the times they came from wineries or other times they'd come from different places he just was staying at. And uh, this one in particular, we don't really have a ton of information on it. You can obviously see here, it's beautiful. I mean, it's getting um, some sugar spots there at the bottom of it. And that's because I'm in a quite humid place. But I imagine for those of you guys in drier locations, that would not be a factor. Uh, but on many light-skinned or yellow-skinned figs, you do see those brown sugar spots quite frequently. Um, in any case, this tree, again, we don't have a ton of information on it, but it's definitely a variety that I'm so far really quite impressed with. Now, I, this is a quite a preliminary review, but what I can see from this variety so far is that it does seem quite productive. Um, it does seem really tasty. And it also seems to ripen rather early, at least somewhere in between early and mid-season. And um, so I like this fig. I don't know where exactly it's going to rank for me. Um, I have a hard time putting this fig in a higher tier for somebody in a humid climate simply because of this open eye that you see. Now, the skin, I haven't really been able to uh, determine how good the skin is in times of rain, um, the skin can very easily absorb water or shed water. And if it absorbs water, the fruits will crack or split and they'll definitely absorb water and lose bricks. They'll be lower in sugar um, content or at least it'll be a diluted sugar content. There is at least the one positive on this one that the eye is being plugged up with honey. Now the first one didn't have that, but I did pick it a little bit under ripe. I would say the hang time so far on this seems to be about average. And from the looks of it, from the outside, it does remind me very much so of a fig called Monaco, from the country of Monaco, that is popular in Italy, by the way, um, this fig. It's also described, I believe it's described in Galicio's drawings, if I'm not mistaken. Galicio went around Italy and really well documented a number of Italian varieties of not just figs, but other fruits and um, drew them, wrote about them, and he has a book of them. And this to me is like a pear shaped Monaco fig with the same coloration, very similar uh, you know, colors there on the bottom with the, the sugar spots. I actually uh, really like the fig Monaco in terms of its eating quality, but I did end up getting rid of it last year uh, because of its uh, poor ability to withstand moisture. And of course, it also has an open eye. And this eye actually was the worst feature because a lot of times there'd be mold in here. It has been really rainy here actually. During the time though that I think these two figs were ripening, there's been minimal rain. It has been humid, uh, but the temperature is now and it's like the middle to the end of July. And here in the Philadelphia area, it's, uh, well, it's, it's been really warm. So I have to compare my photos that I have of Monaco to this. I'd be very curious to see, but I think we'll be able to really tell from the flavor, I think is really where I think I'm gonna be sold, whether or not it's Monaco or not. I'm hoping it's not. You know, I think a lot of you guys might be hearing me say this. I'm just proposing the idea that there is that possibility. Now, is it exact, is it, is it an exact copy of Monaco? Maybe not. Maybe it has epigenetic differences. Maybe it's mutated. Um, there's a lot of ways figs change and every hardy Chicago is not created equal. Every Celeste is not created equal. Um, every Monaco, I'm sure, is not created equal. To me, this looks rather similar on the inside, but it does seem more red, doesn't it? 
Uh, the Monaco's I believe I've had in the past were a bit more amber, eventually turning red. But every fig I've had off of this tree um, has been red on the inside and has not really went from that amber to pink to red. It's just been red. Um, let's try it. Wow. This fig is exquisite. And it could just be that this is the time of the year that's really the best time of my year for figs. It's so, it's just warm. This warmth really helps in a huge way. Even if it is raining, the warmth really pushes them through that rain and, and um, you know, the hang times are typically shorter. The, the time in which the figs are on the tree and susceptible to that rain is shorter. And they also just ripen better. I mean, they're really the higher quality figs you're gonna get as they're in that final ripening stage. When you have temperatures over 90, between 90 and 100, maybe 95 is that sweet spot. Uh, and you have humidity that's definitely below 50, maybe 40 or 30%. Um, I haven't had the humidity, but uh, this is exquisite. You can tell immediately that the pulp is, um, among the best in terms of texture and eating experience and it feels like I'm eating a pastry in the same way that I feel similarly when I eat a Col de Dame, a Smith, a Hative de Argentile, maybe less so on the Hative, but uh, in the same way I, I um, feel about recently, Noir de Boulogne is another fig that's been ripening at a very high quality with a very high texture and eating experience. sweet and figgy but not a ton of berry flavor it also doesn't give me vibes of a honey fig it's it's really in my mind a sugar fig that i i imagine if pollinated or maybe if grown in a very dry soil in a dry climate you might get a lot of berry flavor out of this but uh this to me actually the closest fig that that when i eat this it reminds me of now that I think about it, is one of the Paradisos. This is very similar to Paradiso Bode, um, and maybe even Paradiso from Ciro. Definitely more similar to Bode, the Bode version. So that's, to me, Bode, if you guys know anything about the figs I like, Paradiso Bode's one of the best tasting figs I, I, I have. So this fig is incredible. Um, I wouldn't put it up there exactly with the Bode version, but for me and my money, this is like seemingly a healthier, more productive, earlier, and almost just as tasty version of the Paradiso Bode, which makes me almost think I don't really need Paradiso Bode, unless I can get it really healthy and really productive like this tree, um, which I will continue to do, but um, this is quite special. And I, it's not Monaco. I would be very surprised if it was similar. It has a very striking resemblance though, I must say. Even there's a slight void in the center, which is kind of similar to Monaco. Maybe this, maybe that's what Monaco is and I just haven't had a good experience with my Monaco. Um, even though I actually really like Monaco, um, some of the figs I've had off of it are quite good and I was really impressed with it two years ago. But last year we didn't have a ton, a ton of uh, luck with the moisture, especially at the time it was ripening. I'm gonna pick one more. That one was a bit melon flavored at the top. You know, what's interesting about this fig as well is that you can see on the outside, there's a like um, coloration difference that the top, because figs ripen from the bottom up, right? The bottom is yellow, whereas the top half of the fig is, is going towards a green color and the top of the fig is green. I haven't seen much of that um, in a ripe fig. As the figs ripen, they typically tend to maybe even get the same color the whole time. This one also is strikingly beautiful. I would argue very similar to the first one though, I don't know if I really need to zoom in on this for you guys. 
Got some grass there on the knife. But I am curious to try this. There's that, you know what? I'll just show you the pool, the nectar there coming out of the, coming out of the eye. And then we'll wrap this up. This is a real nice fig. Let's try it. Decent sea crunch on that one. Very similar, almost no difference. Uh, really like the texture. You know, it's sort of mild flavor wise, but the texture is so good almost, almost at that level of a Paradiso or a Col de Dom that it really just makes you say, wow. You know, here's one example I'll give you that Smith is like similarly textured, but has the flavor component as well. Paradiso Bode has a better texture, but less of that flavor component. So there's a trade-off. This one I think is like slightly below both of them, but nonetheless, very good. And if it was ripened properly in a, I should say a, a better climate, who knows what this could turn into. Um, definitely worth, I think, more exploration. Thanks for watching this one. We'll see you soon, guys. Take care.